We do. Good evening, ballers. Welcome to the 79th episode of A Step Back. It's your host, Leon Tompkins, my main man, Jacob Moses, and joining us tonight from the Valley, our good friend, Corey Decker. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good. What about you? We're good out here, man. You know, the, uh, uh, you're out in the Valley. We're out in the, uh, out in the Northeast. The snow, a blizzard got us. You, what do you, got like 75 degrees out there? Oh, yeah, I broke my back shuffling sunshine the other day. It's just awful. Right. Sunshine in your pocket. I'm kidding. This, this guy. Must be nice. <laughs> Must be nice. Must be nice. Uh, yeah, call me in the summer. It's <laughs> 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 uh, it's our second time having Corey on. Uh, always glad... To have you on, man. Uh, thank you for accepting the invitation. It's nice to see your finally see your face this time. So this is, that's great. Yeah, <laughs> it's great, man. Look at him go. Look at him go. But <laughs> what you are because fan of the hottest team in the league is the Phoenix Suns. Now winners of ten straight, uh, forty and nine. You know Chris Paul and and Devin Booker just. Going about their business, the quietest 40-win team I've ever seen in my life. Uh, a trip from the, to the NBA Finals last year, the, the famous Suns in fourth uh, meme has just gone insane. Uh, how did that Finals run just, you know, how did that go for you out there? I mean, obviously we're upset with how it ended, you know. It's a shame Giannis is such a nice guy because – I want to hate him, but I can't because he's such a fucking class act douchebag. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it was it was really nice to see the city rally around something because we haven't really had. I mean, the bubble suns created a little bit of buzz out here, but it wasn't nearly like what it was last year when we were in the finals. Yeah, you're right. The, the we thought you know Monty Williams took the job and. Phoenix went from worst to first and the epitome of a leader and it enhanced that with the arrival of Chris Paul. You know, you know, Chris Paul, one of the greatest point guards in, in the in league history, outstanding leader, and that's more or less the theme of tonight's episode, leadership. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, Monty Williams exudes that. Chris Paul exhumes that, and, and it shows in the growth of Devin Booker and the rest of the team. Uh, DeAndre, and then this team has multiple 10-win streaks in, during the season. Uh, what's your thoughts on Chris Paul and, and Devin Booker? I mean, Chris Paul, I used to be one of the biggest Chris Paul haters in my entire life because the guy would not shut up. And he still doesn't shut up, but now I love him for it. You know, he's, you look at his season and he's 14.5 uh, points per game. That really doesn't tell the, the story of just what he's done and how much he gets out of everybody else. Like, we're down uh, Aiton and uh, Monty had to go small ball because we're, we're down Aiton and McGee and a couple of our other centers. But you wouldn't know it because Bismack Biombo who in his career averages about 5.2 points per game has shown up and is now averaging 12 points per game because of Chris Paul setting him up. It's magic. And book is just, man, book is everything that hardcore trailblazers fans paint Damian Lillard to be. I love Damian Lillard, but man, book is a team player and he's, he's more than just the highlights and he's just, Extremely clutch. Yes, yeah, but that's what you get from those Kentucky guards. Uh, you know, and, and Book could have easily went the route of requesting a trade and uh, mm -hmm. you know showing out and you know, showing his temper. But the the level of maturity that's shown uh, for Booker, and it's a shame he's not an All Star starter. Uh, thank you, Andrew Wiggins, but. You know, it's – it's you bring up Bismack Biombo and the Chris Paul effect, his effect on what he did in the Thunder and, and 
the Clippers, not so much the Rockets. You know, it's said that the Rockets would have probably won that uh, finals or at least made it to the finals if he didn't get injured. But it's, it's, it's hard not to root for him. Yeah, absolutely. One of the best shooters in the league. And he's just, he's quiet. He goes quiet. He's really quiet about his business, except for you when you get um, mascots involved. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, he, he's all around good guy. Like, he's one of my favorites. Yes, that 70 point game he had was just amazing. I'm watching that one. The dude is like, uh, I don't know, when we say certified gunner, he's one mm-hmm. of them. I mean, he can, there's so many ways on the floor, he can score. Great free throw shooter. And he goes about his business, man. It's it's a shame that you guys went down the way you did, because honestly, I thought you guys had that chip in hand. But use that as motivation. You got the point guard, Chris Paul. Going to be even better when Aiden comes back. You know, Cam Johnson's holding it down for you guys. Um, you got a lot of talent. The talent is there. It's not like besides Chris Paul, you guys are pretty young. But you got to lock up Aiden, though. That's the number one thing. You got to lock that kid up. You can't. You know, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You think he gets traded? Aiden? Yeah. Mm. No. I, no. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy to think because there has been some, some people that have stepped up in his place. You know, JaVale McGee, Bismack Biombo, even Jalen Smith. But mm-hmm. even with the amount of time Aiden has missed, the NBA players on their player ballot – put him like eighth or ninth as the top mm. voted like player out of everybody. And I think that that really speaks volumes that even his peers, the, you know, the people he plays against, you know, Jokic and all the other guys, his impact is insane. I just wish he gets pissed off a little bit more during games because mm. angry DA is best DA. And that's what mm-hmm. we saw in the playoffs. Absolutely. Um, I just have to say, but you guys come into the trade deadline and a name that we've heard, Leon, heard it a lot, Miles Turner. Mm-hmm. I mean, you guys need defense. There's two things you guys need, defense and a backup point guard. If anything happened to Chris Paul, you guys are screwed. Let's be honest on that one. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, oh. I like Miles Turner. It mm. – if they get a if they get a Miles Turner, I, I'm pretty sure I have to give up an eight and for him. I don't know. I don't. I don't think so. I mean, it shouldn't. But the thing which sucks for them is, well, yeah, they. Probably, I don't know. That, that's a. Huh, that's a good question. But I don't think they would give a bait and no. But they definitely need some kind of defense just to hold them down. And plus, with Cameron Payne's decline, he, he declined. I don't know what happened. Chris to LeBron or something. <laughs> just, the dude just, he's non-existent. And for the long stretch, you guys need more than that. Well, I think what happened with campaign is his entire game mm-hmm. is rushing to the basket. His shots, just the ugliest, one of the ugliest I've, I've ever seen. He doesn't mm-hmm pull up he doesn't really try to try to push the ball out Mm -hmm. his big his big thing is he just um he has these lightning quick flashes and he's able to get to the basket and and finger roll it in Mm -hmm. and (laughs) that's not sustainable no it it i mean his game is weird i i thought he peaked but he's like one of those guys who uh Again, you know, the Chris Paul effect, it's just – his game is just so, so weird. I don't, I don't think he thrives anywhere else but Phoenix, but I, I definitely think he hit his peak. You were mentioning the uh, playoff run last year. How significant is that home court advantage there? You know, what, what's the atmosphere like? It's – it's elect- I didn't – Obviously, I, I didn't get to go to any of the playoff games, but even the watch parties mm-hmm. that they would, because they'd open up the arena and they'd have the game on and they'd have the Suns dancers and stuff. Even watching it on a on a TV screen was more energy that I felt in ten years of going to Suns games. 
I, I mean, and and they weren't even on the floor. It was a screen. Like, so I think home court for the Suns is huge. Probably the only Arizona team I could say that for right now. <laughs> but yeah, it's huge. So what what qualities do you f- look for in a leader? Humility is my first and foremost. Uh, I'm a big believer in servant leadership. Uh, got my master's uh, at GCU in leadership, so I think that's probably why I was on. Um, that wasn't very humble of me. <laughs> anyway, the <laughs> number one is is humility. You know, being able to just put yourself aside and make listen to the people that you're actually leading. And one example of this is Coach Monty Williams. You know, he'll he's not going to BS the press afterwards. You know, he says, you know, we need to up our defense, we need to up our up our assists. But then he always follows it up with basically, but here's some areas that I need to improve as well. And I think that that's why there's such a good relationship between Monty and the team. And I think Steve Kerr and Steve Nash for your Nets are also very good at that, realizing that they have shortcomings instead of like a certain Knicks coach that'll come out and say, well, I'm just going to bench Randall. I'm just going to do this. You know, this guy sucks. This guy sucks. This guy sucks. Listen to my scheme. (laughs) You know, (laughs) know, it's all about accountability. And, you know, Monty Williams does uh, have a lot of those characteristics. I I love what he did in in the finals last year, going up to Giannis and congratulating the winning team, you know, Mm -hmm. example of humility and, you know, and it's something to, to rally behind and be, you know, saying of attitude reflects leadership. That's what the Phoenix Suns are. And it, it started to grow in the bubble and, you know, it, like a mushroom, it just blew up. And, uh, you know, I was, I was dead wrong uh, this season. You know, part of my humility as, you know, being a leader is to admit when you're wrong. And uh, I did not think the Phoenix Suns would, you know, have a chance to go back to the finals. I didn't think they were, you know, that good. I thought they were a uh, product of a environment, you know, with the Lakers and the Warriors being down. But, you know, you don't get to mm-hmm. 40 and 9 by accident. So I'm going to chalk this one up as an L to me and uh, <laughs> congratulate the Suns because I, I definitely did not see this coming. This is a resurgent I'm, year for Chris Paul. I mean, honestly, I didn't see 40 and 9 coming. I mean, this is insane. I was. I was putting the Suns at about a, a third seed. I thought Utah would have a bounce back. I thought Denver would have a bigger bounce back now that Jamal Murray's back. I didn't I didn't see forty and nine coming. I you know. No. And Utah struggling now and, and you know Phoenix they don't miss a beat, they just keep right on trucking and you know, Chris Paul at 36, 37, one of the most durable players in the game. It's it's rapper outstanding. Yeah, I can't believe it. You, know, you mentioned the Golden State Warriors and Steve Kerr, an, another mm-hmm. example of, you know, solid leadership. They, they've been struggling a little bit of late. They I know they won Saturday night against Brooklyn, but they've been struggling without the services of Draymond Green. Uh, Curry's look human. Clay Thompson came back and they're struggling to uh, find cohesion. Uh, you know, and, and Draymond Green is, is a player that, you know, the stats don't jump out at you, but his mm-hmm. impact on the floor, it seems like, uh, you know, it, it, he's like the engine that, that makes it go just so, despite kicking people in the nuts, you know? So. <laughs> sometimes you need, sometimes you have to. Robin did it. <laughs> Sometimes you got to get physical. Yes. <laughs> What's your take on the Warriors and, and, and Draymond Green? You surprised they, they look as human as they do because they look like they were a house on fire when they uh, first started out. You know, I Draymond Green is is one of the shining examples of why I'm not a big analytics guy. Because his impact is insane. You look at Curry's numbers with Green on the floor, and he's at like 51% three-point shooting. 
he's like a plus 3.3 in some other metric. And when you when Draymond Green isn't on the on the floor, his shooting percentage drops to 41 percent solely because Green isn't there yelling at him. It's insane. <laughs> and he does more than yell. You know, he has a fantastic podcast. Draymond Green is completely undersold. And, you know, Clay coming back is great, but Clay and Steph are not Clay and Steph are not the leader that Draymond is. You know, Steph used to be, but I don't I don't really know what happened to him. I, I wonder if a pursuit of the three point record kind of like really just drained him. And then it, now it's got to the point where like defenses are, I mean, now they're focused in on him, but you know, his, his shooting percentages, he has the worst month of his career this past month. Uh, Draymond sets up the table so well that it allows Curry to move off ball and uh, Clay to do his thing. It, it it's rather interesting to see how the intangibles of a player, uh, like you say, don't, that don't show up in the, in the stat sheet, like the Rodmans and the Greens and the, even the Kyle Andersons of Memphis. You know, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, I do like his podcast. I think it's uh, Growing Bones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And, and he just signed a uh, contract with Turner uh, so he can be on the uh, in, inside the NBA and, I've been, you know, you watch him and Chuck together. They're actually pretty good. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm glad it's he set like, himself up for after basketball. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's kind of like a KG thing. He had Area 21. Oh, yeah. That shit was terrible. Guess, listen, I said it's something like that. I didn't say <laughs> that it was terrible. I, I, ain't nobody said it was good. I mean, well, <laughs> you listen to him on Showtime. That's a different story. Because you can't, you kind of unedit it there. That's what makes it fun. But yeah, Dream Mind, you know, on the floor, off the floor, he's always good. He, he always had a bad rap for being a dirty player, but. I like players like those. You know, they're hard nosed. They don't. It's, nothing's easy, as we say. No easy buckets when you're on the court. <laughs> um, Fraser you know, Allen's mantra. Okay. Exactly. There you go. Um, but he's the guy that you every glue. He's the glue guy every team needs. You know, and I'm glad he's actually like you said setting himself up after basketball, which I love to see that from players because you know a lot of dudes just fade out and just you don't see again after they stop playing. But I like what they're doing over there. But the Warriors, they – back to Stephen Curry, I mean, I think he'll get it back. I mean, he's still – you know, he'll get his groove going, especially with Clay coming back. You know, this can't last for, you know, the rest of the season. It's just not going to happen. Then with Andrew Wiggins, shout out to him. I mean, we talked about his improvement from Minnesota to now. He was an all-star starter. Who would have said – who would have thought? You know, and he's becoming – we talked about it. He's becoming an actually decent. Like yeah. I said before, we talked about it. I said, like, defense, he's not as bad as people think. Oh, no. And he's talking about one of the best two-way players in the league, which is – it's awesome to see. And this showed you. You put the work in, you'll get there. And because he was just known as a scorer. And you always said you can't teach defense, but sometimes that kind of bucks that because you can learn it as – it just depends how much work you want to put in with your, your you know, your shifts and your foot. Your feet, yeah, your feet movement and all that kind of stuff, and I'm happy for him now. Yeah, and, and Wiggins's resurgence is another thing that you can you can kind of credit to to Draymond because if I remember watching games in Wiggins' first season as a Warrior, mm-hmm. whenever he'd go to the bench, there would be Dre. Mm-hmm. You know, whenever he'd go back into the game, there there would be Dre. Whenever he'd have a pro game interview, there would be Dre. Mm-hmm. It's insane. Yeah, Wiggins. Wiggins seems to be the one player who's now able to thrive with Steph and Clay. Um, you know, he he's an All Star, and he's not a damn starter to me. But you know, that that's a whole other story. Uh, we mm-hmm. get a little bit later, but it, you know, D'Angelo Russell didn't work out. Uh, Kelly Oubre didn't work out. And now those guys are thriving elsewhere. Uh, I like to see a story like uh, Wiggins, number one pick. You know much maligned down in Minnesota, getting his uh, claim to fame now. So it's, it's a good mm-hmm. story. Absolutely. You know, and, and, you know, the Wiggins as an all-star starter, um, Giannis, Embiid, you got uh, 
I think Durant, he's not going to play, but he, he chose yeah. the team. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. glad Trey Young got, got the nod, John Morant, mm-hmm. uh, Steph Curry, um, Joker. I think I'm missing somebody else. But, uh, mm-hmm. it, you know, it, the all-star voting, you know, it, I know it's for the fans. A lot, a lot of voting uh, procedures <laughs> get questioned. <laughs> Uh, do, do you think it's time to change the all-star voting format to make sure like guys who deserve it actually go in? It's not, not, not the top team from the East or the West have an all-star starter. Man, I've been saying that. <laughs> <laughs> you know me, man. That popularity shit got to go. I'm sorry. I, it's just, just look at it. Andrew Wiggins is good, and I'm going to go right to him. Out of all players in the West that they got, Andrew Wiggins was the guy. I, I mean, I'm, I got to look at his numbers. But as you go through it, you no know, Joker, absolutely. You know, you're honest, you do all that kind of guys. Yeah, the usual suspects, KD, Kyrie, how he, Kyrie, there it is. I'm going to zone in on that one right there. Mr. Mr. Half Game or whatever the hell you want to call him. He's a part-time player. Part-time, part-time player. <laughs> I feel like I'm watching Brock Lesnar in WWE. But um, this is crazy. <laughs> How the hell did he get so many balls? He was up there, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. It, it's all the uh, anti-vaxxers, flat earth people. They, <laughs> they, they go out in droves, man. <laughs> but what the hell is going on? I mean, I mean, shit, I'd rather see Miles Bridges up there. It's like kids like him. You no, know, Melo, let those guys put the guys have been playing their asses off, and then you got people that vote Kyrie. But what the hell? How many games he played? Two? Like, what, what is uh, going on? It's up to Shut eight. Up, we are. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh pardon my, pardon me, <laughs> hard, hard, hard. You know, you're right. Like, so the other night, Van Gundy, some, he made a pretty interesting point, and mm-hmm. I and I agree with some of it. Um, so all star selections, you know, this this affects their uh, status, their it affects contracts. And more or less, you know, if you get into the Hall of Fame based on your number of uh, all-star selections you get. So while it's insignificant, it's also kind of significant. Mm-hmm. So he proposed that right now, right now it's 50% fan vote, and I think like 25 uh, uh, writers and 25 coaches. Yeah. He was saying that, that it should be like 25% fans, mm-hmm. 25% uh your peers, but you, you obviously can't you can't vote for the guy on your team. Yeah. And twenty five percent the writers, and twenty five percent coaches. Mhm. You know you get that you can you know more or less get like the and and, and they had to play forty percent of the team's games up to that point. Mhm. Which is why I kind of don't get why John Morant's a, a starter. He deserves it, but I would probably have Chris Paul over him. Yeah, you I'd got have, Chris Paul. Yeah, I had a Chris Paul well, over John Morant and and Booker over Wiggins. Yeah, I mean, there's so many guys. Him, I mean, Zach Levine. Like, I mean, what what the hell? There's a lot of there's a lot of guys that were over them, but it, it's cool to see the young guys. But if you truly deserved it, yeah, I see that. But even Draymond, when you really look at it, hell, Draymond was healthy. He deserved it more than Wiggins did. Mm-hmm. You really look at it, you look at the numbers, and if you want to talk about effect on the floor and his game, mm-hmm. Raymond was an easy decision for me, but, you know, who am I? Who yeah, I think I'm I, – I, I'm of – I really think Ja deserves to be a starter. Like, you know, obviously being a Phoenix fan, I, I love Chris Paul's impact, but Ja, which team is worse off? If you take Jaw off the Grizzlies or Chris Paul off the Suns, I think the Grizzlies fall from like a what are they a three, three yeah. seed? I think they fall to ten. Like, Jaw Jaw just does so much. I mean, he's averaging north of twenty five points per game, high assist totals. I mean, he has one highlight a week that. Look straight out of NBA Street on PS2. Like, <laughs> it's astounding. 
Uh, yeah, but he definitely Ja is always a pleasure to watch, man. And yeah, he definitely deserves it. Uh, that, either way, that window I, dunk the other night was. Oh God, I swear yeah. he he either gonna hurt somebody or himself. <laughs> <laughs> Because this dude dunked so damn hard. It's just crazy, man. Who else you, you guys have any, uh, since the All-Star starters were, were named, uh, guys have any idea who, uh, any reserve picks you want to see? Starting? No, no, uh, your reserves? I'd say Booker and Paul, easy. Easy. Hmm. Anthony Edwards, maybe yeah. even uh, Rudy Gobert or mm -hmm. Carl Anthony Towns for me. Yep. You know, I, I'm i looking at a write-up right now, and it lists Anthony Davis and Paul George. And <laughs> Paul George, he's only been in 26 games. I mean, <laughs> I call him garbage time George because that's the only time he shows up. <laughs> and Anthony Davis played, what, two more games than Kyrie? I mean, maybe Ooh. it's maybe it's – Exactly. Street clothes. Mr. Unibrow. Thank you. Thank you. Street yeah. clothes. Yeah, that's his name. We don't call him Anthony Davis anymore. So he plays at least 95% okay. of the game. It is street clothes. Maybe he needs the birds and sage before the game. That way he can leave his street clothes where they belong or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, oh man. Yeah, that, um, I agree with those those picks. I, I I like Edwards. I like Towns, Gobert. Mm -hmm. I mean that that's pretty much you know spot on. Um, it, what about you? How about out east, uh, Jacob? Zach Levine. I'm just saying. I know yeah. That I, I, I hope he takes Durant's spot. Yeah, at least. Yeah. But it's just the Rosen. Absolutely. I mean that that was that was easy, but. For him not to be there, because he was just as much of an important piece to the Bulls than DeRozan is. I mean, DeRozan gets all the, all the freaking hype and everything, but Levine's been doing this for a few seasons now with Chicago. Like, that was the guy. And he's been putting up consistent numbers. His numbers are going up, up, up. But um, Levine is just really the guy I pretty much I'll look at. Yeah, I, I hope uh... – a mellow ball. You mentioned Miles mm -hmm. Bridges. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure Harding will get a get a nod in there. Yeah, um, he's hurt, I, isn't he? Yeah, he was hurt the past couple games. First was his hamstring, then now it's his hand. So I, I just think mm. he's, uh, I th I think he's bullshitting because he uh, <laughs> he didn't want to play with bench players. My man. Game, so you know, yeah, that's facts. That's I'm, facts all day. I mean, my man's been here like a year and a half. He's bitching about traffic. Well, Where, I, I, I don't <laughs> in Brooklyn. Man, I know I know like 35 people. That's like, not me either. <laughs> weather, taxes. Yeah, hey, come I see on, my ass up. Oh yeah. You ain't lying. <laughs> taxes? I told y'all I'm about to I'm about to flip sides, man. I want <laughs> but um I will say this. Not having a cavalier on the all-star squad is a travesty. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Garland or Mobley should have been there. One of them. I don't care who it was, but they definitely deserve to be there. So that – I'm not a fan yeah. of that. That's how Cleveland's been playing. Mm -mm. Yeah, I have Garland on there. I have uh, Deontay Murray from the Spurs. Yes. I got him, yes. Got him going. Uh, Kyle Kuzma. Uh, I, I was kind hey. of uh, torn between Kuzma and Tyler Hero. Harold's been balling out. Definitely. Harold's been balling out. I don't think Butler played enough games to to warrant, but if anybody from the mm -hmm. Heat should go, I, I I think it should be Hero. Yeah, I like Hero. Hero's been doing it. Yeah, I think uh, I think Chris Middleton needs to be a reserve. You know, he's mm -hmm. forty percent from three. 20 points per game, you know, he's quiet, he's overshadowed by his mm -hmm. teammate Giannis, who's a starter, but, you know, Chris Middleton is, is really showing out for the Bucks. Mm -hmm. Man, fuck Chris Middleton. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, wait a minute, what? I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> we all like, cock-eye, motherfucker. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he killed Game Seven. That that he three in the, that three in the corner pretty much uh took defeat. the wind out of sails. And you know, mm-hmm. listen, I love Chris Middleton's game, but you know, for the next uh, year or so, it, it, it's fuck Chris Middleton. So, <laughs> yeah. well, who else? Well, OG Ananobi. That's another one. Yeah, I, I like Fred Van Fleet going, man. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He, he deserved that. Great value, Drake. Shout out to him. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody from Boston yeah. deserves to go. You know, <laughs> Boston, they, they don't deserve anything. They already got a, they got a Hall of Famer who uh, shouldn't have been in, so they deserve no more accolades. Well, that's loaded against gun smoke. <laughs> yeah. Boston deserves nothing nice. You know what I mean? So, yo. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. No, nah, ain't going to happen. Ain't gonna for me. Nope. Up 12. I mean, um, oh. <laughs> I, I mean <laughs> you want to get started on Boston? We'll, we'll get started. But yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. keep it the basketball right now. Shout yeah, out to Randy know, Hammond Boston. and Matt Bush. You know, you know, Boston's really been losing air ever since Brady left. <laughs> and we're here for it. <laughs> <laughs> Corey said, load it, load it back up. More than that. Yes, I like that one. Well, oh man, you do know how uh, Wiggins got the the All Star push, but Hoodie Bang. So oh, never mind. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, why Marcus Camby looks so old? I'm, I'm sorry, because I just looked at Marcus Camby. I'm like, what? <laughs> so apparently, like the Warriors have a. Uh, an ambassador for the team, what like mm-hmm. a K-pop star, and he led the push for the uh, the voting for mm-hmm. Andrew Wiggins to be named to the All Star team. So mm-hmm. even in All Star voting, you get foreign interference. Oh, jeez, that's some sh- mad. Man, th- those those foreign that K-pop star outranked whoa, the damn whoa. Kardashians, <laughs> like. <laughs> Brooke had Yo. Kylie freaking tweet, tweet it and her useless ass followers didn't help shit. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Kylie has some like she has some connections, but no, it's it's Andrew Wiggins. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> oh man, that no comment on that one. No. No. Oh Lord. But you know, you talk about leadership and you know, the Knicks are on right now and Julius Randle Ooh. looks, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Julius Randle is taking a huge step back. <sighs> no pun intended. Yeah, nah, you got, please don't yeah. go connect that to our show. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> no. It, there's like a lack of effort, or it's, every video you see of him is it, like bad body language. It's not engaged with the team. You just think it's taken out of context, or is it just uh, this time running out in New York? I'll say some of it is taken out of context, but he doesn't do any, himself any favors the way he acts. The, just the one I saw last week, and I never noticed it, is when Obi went to the floor. And this, I'm all about pick your brothers up. They fall down, you pick them up. You don't look at him dead in his eye and you walk away. Like, I, no. That right there, you lost major points for me. And I just from right there, I want him going. Because we cannot have – you're trying to build a team atmosphere, and you can't have a guy like that, especially in New York. You're going to be crucified as it is. But when people in the, this is why we are the social, we're the media capital of the world. Catch everything. And that right there, I, I'm not a fan. I don't care if you drop 50, 50 in like eight games like Kobe did in one season. I want him to go. I'm sorry. I just, I'd rather see Obi out there now. And it kind of forces Tibbs. Yeah, you both hear niggas, oh, yeah, we're right. Oh, we're right, Tibbs. <laughs> no, listen, Tibbs is good from what they needed. They needed a culture change. Let it change and let it keep going. Because obviously you can say that now since they're doing well. But, you know, if it wasn't for Tibbs, I think we're still at the bottom of the barrel, you know, not having what we have now. But it looks like Julius Randle is doing well now. He got the hair out, so maybe okay. whatever. But either way, yeah, his body language is just he complains too much, which I hate. I don't like players. Every little play – you don't get a call. You complain instead of running back up the court. You looking at the ref, cursing at him, and I just don't. 
I don't like them. Maybe it's just maybe it'll change in a few weeks or something. But I just not right now. I just don't like that. And he's, he he seems like a me 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 guy. And for somebody that never really got the chance until AD got hurt, he should be more of a team guy and a guy willing to put in. You know, I, I'm not gonna say he doesn't put the work in because he does, but he should be a little bit more humble because LA, you know, his first game, obviously you know what happened, and then he didn't really get a chance in LA. Shunned off the New Orleans, then he finally gets a chance with the Knicks to show what he can do. So I was a big fan. And, you know, he gets the contract all of a sudden after that Sun series, I mean, excuse me, the Hawks series, he just looks like a straight bum. Like he's still averaging okay points for somebody. Somebody's making as much money as he is and you're not averaging over 20. Uh, that's pretty much a problem. But like I said, it's, it's, a lot, it's a lot more than him to worry about. You know, you got, you got to get Cam Reddish in the rotation. You know, you got to get him there. Evan Fournier has been stepping it up. What do I say all the time about point guard play, Leon? What do I say? It's essential. Yeah. <laughs> NBA is a point guard league. Kimball Walker doesn't play enough. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love the whole coming back to New York thing. Yeah, Kimball BK, you know, BX kid, excuse me, Rice High School. Yeah, that's great. Roddy Raw, ha, ha, ha. But when you're playing – you play 30 minutes one game, then your knees barking the other. Then we got to do Burks again at the point guard position. There's a problem. So they got to get that figured out. But either you let McBride rock or get one of these kids, you know, some time to actually play their game or you got to make a deal. But as of right now, they're, they're, they're in trouble. I'll, I'm going to keep it real. There's no – I'm usually optimistic, but there's – trades have to be made. They really got to look into that market and try to get – a legit point guard in here. You can't wait for Derrick Rose to come back and be our savior because it's not going to work. Yeah, uh, I'm surprised how impactful that Rose injury has been. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, he's for all his you know uh, misfortunes in the in the league and bad luck, he has proven mm -hmm. to be a leader on that roster, and that's why Tibbs goes to him all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're, you're right, point guard play is absolutely essential. And you, you mentioned it before for you make a move for Murray, but I don't I don't know what exactly that would take in order to bring him in. But uh, it, it's – you think uh, his job is on a hot seat? Tibbs? Mm -hmm. yeah. Not right now. Mm -hmm. I'll say after year three, after next year, if things don't really – Start jiving, then you it starts heating up a little bit because after the second year, we all knew they were coming back down to earth. Let's be honest, uh, mm -hmm. you saw it coming. That last year was just it was amazing. They were high. They took the league by storm. But again, you look at their guard play compared to a lot of good teams in the East. You look at the Bulls. You go to the West. You look at the Suns. You look at your Nets. You got the guard play. You have closers, legit closers. You have to be able to finish games out, and the Knicks cannot do that. You know, you got Alex Burks taking big shots, man. I don't know how many games you're going to win. Um, yeah, this this league is a guard league. You know, we talked about the game. That's pretty much a dead thing now. Like I said, get a Murray. I'm giving up a first round for Murray. I'm not even thinking twice about it. Dude is great both sides of the ball. Ex he's an excellent defender. He's tough. And if the Spurs don't want him, hey, send him my way. Um, Fox is pretty much you're not going to get um, Halliburton he's not going anywhere I was surprised when they that report even came out it's no way but they have to get a legit young point guard in here that can run the team whereas Derrick Rose can come off the bench and be that you know spark plug for the second unit because he he's the Derrick Rose of old when he's coming off the bench I I think you know when he's not you know, playing 35 game, 35 minutes a game, freaking trying to give it his all. Like, he needs that rest now. His knee injury is just like Kimba. 20 minutes a game, top him out. 20, 25 is pushing it. That's top him out, pause. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, it's just it's a lot of stuff, man. It's, fr it's, it's fun to watch him, but then because you'll see guys like Mitch. They're, he's doing his thing. He's looking really good. Every time he falls on the floor, it makes me nervous. Evan Fournier, when he's on, he's on. You know, French team Fournier, when he shows up, we love him. Alex Burks has been off. It's, 
It's just they're not doing it. Not everybody's not clicking together. It's not. Obi, and I will say this, the Knicks look like a better team than Obi's on the floor than Randall. Mm. Big time. Corey, I'll ask you this. Mm-hmm. Now, the word on Tibbs is that, you know, he's great for culture change, but, you know, a, a voice that goes, you know, goes stale. It, it grows mm-hmm. tired. And you hear that with a number of coaches across many sports. Mm-hmm. I will say, I'll ask, uh, you know, it, it, as a leader, you know, is, is that possible, is, you know, to uh, have a voice that, you know, I, I guess essentially that people would tune out? What, what can you do to uh, combat that? Well, I think, I think one of the things, one of the players that we could look at is uh, LeBron James this year. Mm-hmm. You know, People like – we like to put players on posters on our walls and everything, but we forget that when it comes to leading a team, your voice can come stale, especially when you don't have accountability and you don't have that floor general, like Jacob was saying. Mm-hmm. Part of the reasons why the Suns work is because Monty Williams will set the culture and he'll set the time, but throughout his time here, whether it's Ricky Rubio – or whether it's Chris Paul, there has been somebody that's been on the floor while the coach is yelling at the ref, being on top of guys that can more relate and get on their level. And the issue with a lot of leaders nowadays is they think they can do all of it, but the real the realization is if you're up here mm-hmm. and you try to talk to uh, somebody on your bench – and say, you need to do this, and you need to do that, and you need to do this, that player on the bench is, is not going to listen because they're going to say, well, it's easy for you to say. You just pace the floor the entire game. That's why you need that leader on the floor to also come alongside the coach and point out different things to different players and, and keep them accountable, which dead-ass, dusty-ass bitch Randall has mm-hmm. been failing at. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's gonna be a shirt. That's gonna be a freaking dusty ass bitch. <laughs> Damn it. But yeah, that I, I agree, man. I agree. You you get the money, you're the main guy, you have to be the leader on the floor that your team needs. And this whole letting him bring the ball, he's not a point forward. I don't care if he averages five or six. It, uh, no, he's not a point forward. I, I don't like it. And I, in my next groups, I tell these guys, listen, he's a better player if he plays like Zach Randolph. Put him on the block, do what you got to do, because he's a mismatch for a lot of people because he's so big. Of course. Um, <laughs> but, but, you know, he's, what, 6'8", whatever, 260. It's hard to guard that. And why are you still catching the ball down by the – by the three-point line, yes, you shot 40% last year. Great. It's not working this year. Change the game up. I just hate when players can't change their games. They, if it doesn't work, they keep going to the same thing. You know, you got to be able to adapt to defenses. you got to be able to read the floor. How can I score this way? How can I get somebody else involved? But it just it doesn't happen with him. I, and I really I don't get it. And the attitude doesn't help. You know, his, his power and he all mad, you know, treating teammates like crap and I hope Tibbs is saying something like listen you got to get it together but it comes down on Tibbs you know I do coach of the year absolutely but you know that wears off quickly you know I want to got you know Monty Williams he, he's like that's he's a great coach there's I swear there's hardly anything I've ever seen him ever do wrong because he, you know, he grabs his players. Listen, this is what you need to do. Maybe Tibbs need to do that more. You know, Rand, talk to Randall. Like, listen, this is what you got to do. You got to be that guy and get through to him. Because if you don't get through to him, Nick's going to be in the position they were for the past 20 or so years. And that's looking in at the teams playing in the playoffs. And I don't want to see that again. I enjoyed last year. I don't care if we got smacked in the first round. <laughs> that was fun getting back to the playoffs. So you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but like, so now if the rumor mill, you know, it, it never stops churning. Mm-hmm. The Knicks being linked to uh, Donovan Mitchell. That's a good pick. Of course. That's a good pick. 
Absolutely. You know, say the Jazz, you know, get a first round exit, you might request a trade and the Knicks might, you know, be all in on it. And considering he is from, grew up a Mets fan, he is from here. So all, all those connections make sense. It, it's just something else that the, you know, Knicks fans would be, be hyped up to get let down for. Exactly. That's why I'm not getting too hyped about, you know, and I've said this before, said it before. I say a lot of things. I mean, I'm kind of, I'm known out there in those streets. Just kidding. But, <laughs> um, but with the whole Mitchell thing, when we could have Mitchell already, that he was my pick. That was the one I wanted in that draft, the Frank Nilakina draft. Thanks, Phil. Now that's a dusty ass bitch, <laughs> Phil Jackson. <laughs> I want it was either Mitchell or Dennis Smith. We had Dennis Smith. He had it worked out, but I thought Mitchell was fine. He would have been nice. Maybe his. I don't know if they would have built it around him like Utah did, but still, you had he. I think he could have been an impact player. But going to today, you know, hey, maybe. But I'm not going to bank on it. Yeah, everybody. Oh, they they get bounced in the first round. Yeah, he's going to request the trade. But then, what are you going to have to give up for him? You know, I'm, if it happens, it happens. But there's too many times I never get hyped up on free agency. It's it's just no, because not a lot of people have the heart to play here. That's the one thing I do give Randall respect for. He has taken on the whole playing New York thing, but he acts like a bitch about it. Let's be honest. I mean, you wanted to take it on. Now you're acting like you don't know what they expect. It's kind of like Harden. Well, you think what was going to go on? I don't like living in Brooklyn. What the? F- what do you? What are you expecting? Is you think it was going to be like Texas? What, what? <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, hey. you know, Texas, I'm sure, has strip clubs. We have gentlemen's clubs, and it's, it's, a, bit, uh, <laughs> it's a bit more sophisticated, <laughs> a bit a little more, you know. Unless he got stale. <laughs> the milk has gone stale. The milk has gone bad. <laughs> on that note. <laughs> the on the daily life right now. <laughs> We're about to get canceled. <laughs> but yeah, I can't. I I just can't. I don't understand these plays. They come to these big cities and they expect anything's going to be different from your last. Yeah, it's going to be different. But you know, you got to expect these things. Like Katie's been here. You know, we didn't talk to you. Y'all don't talk to you. Kyrie. You know, y'all don't talk to each other and. But yeah, and it's kind of funny though when they were winning. You know, Jay Harden was all rah rah rah, but it's a tough patch. You know, then all of a sudden, that's when you tell what kind of player he actually is or what kind of person he is. When things start getting tough, that's when you start like Randall. He's starting to show yeah. like, oh, can you really handle this pressure? But uh, I, I think <clears throat> uh, with Brooklyn, it's. You know, the idea that these three were put together to be, you know, the greatest offensive trio of, you know, of mm-hmm. all time, but to only play 16 games together, to know the potential it could have mm-hmm. and never have it happen is very frustrating, you know, mm-hmm. for various reasons, you know, an unforeseen KD injury and now, you know, the uh, Kyrie's vaccination status. I, I'm I'm sure it's frustrating to him. <clears throat> mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, I can't get mad at that but the idea that you think with the way you forced yourself out of Houston Mm -hmm. and you know you say you're going to be with Chris Paul that didn't work out it didn't work out with Westbrook I mean at some point like you like uh, Corey said there has to be accountability you got to look yourself in the mirror and have a moment of self-reflection and Harton came into last year out of shape I don't know how much that hamstring injury led to him being out of shape or what kind of impact it had. But mm-hmm. he was awful in game seven. He was awful for the second half of the, of the playoffs. And to hold Kyrie's personal decision against him winning a championship it is wrong. It's not his fault this city has a mandate mm-hmm. and he can't play home games. I mean, KD got injured on a freak play. Will, yeah. will things change once we get to the playoffs and, you know, maybe the mandate's been lifted, maybe they might ease it something. Because uh, right now they're the sixth seed and they're closer to the playing game than they are the first place. Mm-hmm. So m- maybe role games will be to their advantage. 
Joe Harris has been out. This team hasn't been whole all year. And mm-hmm. to be where they are is actually quite incredible. And you may, to be ruled by Philadelphia, who in their own right hasn't really ac- haven't accomplished anything. And B has played very well. Uh, top MVP candidate. I mean, he's been on the tear. Mm-hmm. But let's not act like Embiid has been, a, you know, a model of help. <laughs> no, absolutely. So I agree. To no, know I mean potential. I, I, I think it, it's just frustration talking, trying to get Kyrie to guilt him into a, a vaccine shot. Uh, go ahead, Corey. No, I if we're if we're talking about Harden taking a dip, I just can't help but think about the uh, anti-flopping rules. I mean, there's a reason <laughs> he went from going from like 30 points per game to what is he at? 20 something now? 24? Right around 20, 22, 23. Okay. Yeah. It, it took a dip because, and he, and he hasn't learned how to bounce back for, from it. So now he's blaming everything else other than taking that level of accountability. You know, Harden is a sun devil and I'll respect him for that, but I've never been a fan <laughs> of his. And it's just, you know, like like you guys said, what do you expect when you play in New York? Did you expect to have the 20-acre ranch? Did you expect to have nothing <laughs> but pastor's daughters in the strip club? Did you expect to not have, like, massive income tax? Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. Oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah, you go from no state tax to this. Yeah, I'd, I'd be pretty pissed, too. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it, it, it's... It's frustrating to have all these, like, uh, <clears throat> to not realize the potential that this could reach. But, hey, I, I, all in all, I don't think Harden's going anywhere. Uh, and, and B, I mean, that's like the second coming of Olajuwon right now. Just mm-hmm. no way he should be that big and, and move that gracefully. It's just unfair. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and the way Ben Simmons has been uh, – sabotaging this whole thing like <laughs> you get two failed trades a week uh <laughs> yeah. one one week it was the pistons uh, sadiq bay and jeremy grant i believe and a few picks just, just some trash for ben simmons and tobias harris and you had the kings triad halliburton and then you had the <laughs> atlanta hawk with john collins bogdan bogdanovich and three first round picks um <laughs> I, I still don't think Ben Simmons gets moved into the offseason. Philly screwed mm-hmm. that up, you know, yep. loyally. Uh, but Ben Simmons was picked, uh, unfortunately, as one of the captains on this team. And you see him out <laughs> in Australia, he's, he, you know, getting engaged and taking photos with uh, models. And, you know, you get summer gym threes from him and he shows up <laughs> to training camp clearly disengaged and pulls a mental health card. I don't know if it's real or not. Who knows? You know, only he can tell you, but it's pretty clear he's not coming back to this team. You know, Corey, how would you address that Ben Simmons situation? Cut him. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's seriously. Cut him. Cut him. I, I, I mean, you, you cannot have that. Let's see. If you, if you took – like a plastic bag, and you took a 50-pound weight and put it on the plastic bag, what, what's going to happen? It's not going to hold water. That's your title hopes with a, with, a, with a presence like that on your team. You know, I, I don't get why Ben Simmons has all the hype. You know, I've seen his jump shot, and I think I can make more threes than him. <laughs> um, but honestly, I would, I would seriously just put him aside and, and as the – 76ers GM, I would say, look, you don't want to be here. We clearly don't want you here anymore because, you know, I think they, they had some sort of suspension or something for him. Yeah. And I, I'd cut him. I mean, either cut him or just try and get what you can for him in the off season. You know, he's got enough hype. Some Maybe the Lakers will take him. I don't know if he's over 35, and I know that's their requirement. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> Man came with a fully hooded clip today, boy. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> but Who gave it that ammo to Army? Just, 
just get Ben Simmons off your team if you're the 76ers because you're not going to do well with him if he's if he's crying like a bitch every week. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> all right, counterpoint. With the, way, <laughs> with the way, you know, that whole game seven transpired, you know, he missed a layup and, you know, he didn't take a layup and all that. Mm-hmm. Doc Rivers, you know, the, his teammates – and, it, you know, the GM more or less threw him under the bus after the game. Um, they weren't sure of his future with the team. They said they were uncertain. So they go into the offseason and mm-hmm. no, nothing happens. No apologies, you know, nothing. You go a whole mm-hmm. summer, you come back. Apparently they tried to make amends, but it was like two, three months later. And Ben Simmons doesn't want to hear any of it. How much fault do you put? on Doc Rivers as the coach of the team or, or the GM or, or management? I mean, they've got to have some faults in this. It's, it's hard for me to put a number on it without actually being in the room. I know that mm-hmm. uh, in his time with the Clippers, with Chris Paul, you know, the, uh, Doc Rivers was kind of accused of uh, a little bit of nepotism with his son. Um, you know, I think there's got to be something there because there's a reason why Doc was never able to get over that hump with some stacked Clippers teams. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, because like, I, I can see why he would be upset, uh, Simmons, but also at the same time, I mean, you are a professional. Um, I, I think both sides handled that poorly. Uh, and to waste Embiid's uh, – prime like this you know let's, let's face it Philly's a very good team but they're not championship contenders without that second and third piece because Tobias Harris I mean I, I love Tobias Harris but he's not he's not it he, he's not it and they really they really screwed that one up mm-hmm. but, yeah I don't, I don't get that either but is he still getting paid he lo- he's still getting paid but he's losing He's just losing money, right? Something like that. Now? Yeah, he, I think he's getting fined by the team for every game he mm. misses. I, I think he might be over like ten to twelve million now. I nah, chill. Like That's, sell a house or something. But. Nah, you bugging now? I ain't losing. I'm throwing games or something. I'm purposely doing shit on the floor. <laughs> I'm playing. I'm playing. No, I'm I'll, I'll make sure you get me the hell out of there. But yeah, I, I just don't. Shout out to Ben Simmons though. He's the reason I came up with the dusty ass pitch though. But um, shout out to him. <laughs> but um. But yeah, he definitely, dude. What the fuck are you doing? It, it's I I cannot stand when players sign these big ass deals, and then they decide, you know, fuck it, I don't want to play. Just play your if you don't if you want to get traded, you know, do it behind closed doors. And this is another thing I do like about the Knicks though now because a lot of stuff does not get out. That's what I like about Leon Rose. I hear a lot of complaints of we don't see him. Good, good. I don't want to see him. I don't want to see nothing about him. Just do your stuff in silence. Like when the Cam Reddish did, we we heard about it like they happened. There was no rumblings or anything. But like even a Ben Simmons situation, dude, do everything behind closed doors, play, and then get traded when you get traded. It's just, but now you're making yourself look like a dick. And you got Mm -hmm. Embiid playing freaking damage control. Or, you know, we still want, even, you know, he's lying out of his damn teeth. Oh, yeah, we. We're praying for our brother. We're going to help him out during this time. Yeah, right. You're saying F him in your locker room. You know damn well. You know what that's about. This this, 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 this bitch not, oh, not helping our team right now. Was He's ben not helping Simmons, the process. Was Ben Simmons the one where, you know, everything kind of went down and then there was like a trio of Embiid and two other guys that went to go and try to talk to him? And they couldn't reach yeah. him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's what. That's what. Because before I was kind of like, okay, you know, I could see the owner, I could see mm-hmm. the player. There's disconnect here. But once he didn't even talk to Embiid, because like, if you know something happens with your team direct mm-hmm. as a leader, you can use that to your advantage. You can look at the rest of the mm-hmm. team and say, look at this text message I got, mm-hmm. and then you could get that person outed. Mm-hmm. Instead, he wouldn't even talk to Embiid. I mean, yeah, he right. definitely got a, his feelings hurt. 
um, whatever that, whatever that's worth, I don't think, and I've been saying all along, they will not, they will not get fair value for Simmons. Nope. Uh, but, hey, uh, fuck Billy, so there's that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, um, hold on, let's talk about this right quick. Mm-hmm. And I didn't see this. I wish you would have tagged me in this, Leon. Spencer Dinwiddie, his teammates don't want him there. Corner store? What? Excuse me? What's going That's on with that? It, I mean, he should have been. Corey, I'll pull up right now. <laughs> I, I, I want a reason to come and get out of this weather right now. I got plenty of vacation time, sit time. I'll get, get up in your area. <laughs> uh, he wants all the smoke. <laughs> all the smoke. All right. Be smoking that belly, and we ain't talking about brush fires. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I mean, I like Spencer Denwood. I'm not going to lie. I get a lot of shit because he talks so damn much. But he's the kind of person that you hate him when he's not on your team. But when he is, you'll like him. But it's just weird because he had so much to do with them being, with you know, good at first. I mean, they were setting the league on fire kind of. And what the hell happened? Wait, pull a gun on somebody? He pulled a gill? Yeah. Well, the Crittenton? What was I mean, on? like, like Gilbert's teammates didn't even say they didn't want him on the team. They had, they had guns pulled on him. So I don't know. <laughs> well, well I, I would think so. You, of course, you would shut the hell up. But you don't know how crazy he is. <laughs> uh, you like Gilbert? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's my guy. I mean, Dinwiddie is uh, very much into cryptocurrency. Maybe mm-hmm. he's trying to get the team to, like, Convert their contract to crypto. I, I mean, I don't know. And right now, it's not doing too well. <laughs> Ask OBJ. To... Oh God. <laughs> maybe, maybe he want to go to LA. I mean, they they they, they change their arena name. I mean, maybe that's a little. And, and, Is he old and enough? Dim Woody <laughs> 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 is is a West Coast guy, so it, yeah. it might make a lot of sense. Hey. <laughs> West West then with his trade him back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that would be the best thing I've seen in my life. <laughs> oh man. Hey, it's cool, man. It's cool this team now, man. Uh, yeah. That, that's pretty but damn, man, that's crazy. So it's just so many it's going I think this is gonna be a I will be shocked if it's not a busy deadline. I I will be honestly just you see, I, yeah, that's words. why I don't know because there's not as many sellers as I thought there'd be. The Eastern mm-hmm. Conference is pretty packed. Uh, the Western Conference, you know, besides the Kings mm-hmm. and even the Blazers, yeah, I don't, the Pelicans can't really sell off anyone besides the. Uh, I don't know if we're <laughs> going to try to sell off Ingram, but um, mm. it's it's not a lot of not a lot of sellers. Uh, at the trade deadline because it's playing mm. tournament. So it is it's weird. Sure. There's a lot of a lot of teams with needs. Brooklyn, I don't know who they might move and Knicks, depending on how this uh, stretch goes, they might be sellers themselves. Mm-hmm. That forty eight contract is god awful. Yeah, you ain't getting that. It, I mean you were right on that one. I got I gotta give you that one. I, I didn't think it was so bad which everybody was getting paid, but now that I look at it in the production market like yeah, that was, that yeah. was kind of rough. That, that shit's awful. Then, then Noel, everybody, oh, Noel, he didn't play half the games this year. Rose, whatever. Rose gets the – that's the only one I get a pass. I think he gets a pass on who's just whatever, but I know what he's going to get. But Noel, Fournier, Burks, like, damn, bro, what happened? Damn, homie. Last year, last year you were the man, <laughs> homie. Speaking of Noel, he's sitting, he's sitting on the exercise bike. And then, <laughs> oh, that's, oh, damn, that's my his favorite spot. But – <laughs> uh, a good friend, Angel Morales, uh, in the comment section. How you doing, brother? Mm-hmm. Had, had an interesting idea. Uh, Joe Ingles, torn ACL out for the season. Yes. He suggested Brandon Ingram to Utah. Ooh. That's why I don't know. I don't know if they have the <laughs> money. Because he's a max guy, and they got to they they give up a lot. Conley's making a lot of money. Uh, Mitchell's Hell of a... Gobert's a max uh, guy. I, I mm, Angel, I know that's your team, but sh- sh- man, <laughs> uh, y'all better get Daddy's younger something. I don't know what to tell y'all. 
But I mean, it, go ahead, Corey. Maybe there's a, you know, I know it's Utah and they don't really do this there, but maybe if you get a nice big pot and you take some, you know, like a frog's head and you take some other stuff, then maybe you could make that happen. Because uh, that's <laughs> a hell of a pickup for Utah, but I don't oh, have. I'll have their cat face in front of me, but if they were to somehow pull that off, like mm-hmm. that'd be a serious pickup. Yeah, that would be definitely crazy. Oh yeah, absolutely. Put a younger guy on there. It's just Ingram's, you know, ability to penetrate, even shoot, opens it up for Mitchell, opens it up for everybody on that floor. I mean, that would be, man, that would be real interesting. Man, I'd like to see Russell Westbrook to the Knicks if we're talking about nah, Russell Westbrook. Nah, Heck nah. yeah, that's that's your that's who you need. That's the leader the Knicks need. I've been saying that. I've been saying that for three years. Listen, at, nah, the Lakers ruined him now. See, I was I was <laughs> on that train. I was on that train. I was like, yeah, Russ, absolute. The Lakers ruined him now. Nah, chill. Oh, uh-uh. you just got it. I mean, you see what people say about playing with LeBron. It's a he- it's a hectic environment because of all the all the stuff. You take Russ off that team, boot Randall out in the street. Man, you guys are in the five seed. No, nah, I'm I'm not chill. No, right now they they f that up. We got enough brownstones, and I love Russ. They got enough brownstones down there in the city. We ain't, we don't need no more. <laughs> <laughs> got <Yeah>. the <laughs> good lord. I'm glad you mentioned Russ because you know. Um, Right after our last show, he was benched for the fourth quarter in a, in a number mm-hmm. of games down the stretch. And, you know, a player of his caliber, uh, his credentials, um, he was really upset about it. He didn't really talk about it right after it happened. But, you know, you know a couple of days later, he acknowledged he had to be better and uh, took a look in the mirror and, and said, you know, it was good for the team. And, you know, whatever's good for the team, he, he'll do. But... You know, and, and look at Vogel. Uh, at first, he was on a game by game basis until AD came back last week. Um, there's still three games under 500, but mm-hmm. you know, what do you make of Russ's benching in the fourth quarter? You think it's too much? You think it's warranted? Um, I, don't I think know. it was warranted. <laughs> I mean, the way he was playing, man, I, I, I'm sorry. Now, I would do the same thing to Randall. Listen, you're throwing up bricks and you turning the ball over, sit your ass down. I mean, like I said, it's – I like it because nobody's immune to getting benched. I don't care who the hell you are. If you're playing like crap and you're doing more harm than good on the floor, why are you out there? I mean, like, this is a case in point with the Knicks. Randall's playing like crap. If OB's, you know, he's showing more, more of a positive impact on the floor. He's moving around. He's getting easy buckets. Sit Randall down. I don't care how much money you're making. And that's that's what Tibbs needs to do. You know, you got guys like Grimes. He's coming out hitting, you know, four or five threes in the game. Keep him in there. He's playing D. Keep him in there. You have Herm Edwards, my man, ASU. You play to win the game. That, that, that's it right there. That, that is the number one thing. You Just positive results get you more time. I don't know if Tibbs has gotten it yet. <laughs> he should know as a, you know, very winning coach. But if players are actually out playing your starters, let those dudes play. Let them rock. But there was a game against, I want to say Milwaukee. You had Grimes, Toppin, got an ass whipped. But you had <laughs> Toppin, Grimes, all the young guys came in. Reddish didn't come in. I don't know what's going on with that. But they came in. They made the game respectable. But that's what you need. And that's the whole point. I thought that was the whole point of actually getting young guys. The Knicks have one of the youngest – teams in the league still play them let them go let them grow it's that's simple two things let them go let them grow that's that's all you need to do Tibbs is a good coach he he'll push people people say they like playing for him let them let them play but these kids do what they can do because once you start building teams you become like a you know a phoenix team or some one of these young teams like that or grizzlies that's how you become one of those teams that people want to gravitate to because, like, oh, they're giving me playing time. I show what I can actually do. You got Cam Reddish, monster at Duke. You see the scoring potential there. Why is he not playing? Honestly, you know, I would bring somebody, Fournier, I would bring his minutes down. Okay, how much is getting paid? Bring Reddish in there, see what he has. But 
I'm not a coach in the NBA. I'm just sitting here with you guys shooting the shit. <laughs> Entertaining the people. I mean, right. listen, uh, I'm, I'm with you, man. All right. Now, I don't get it. I think, I think he should have been benched, but I also don't think – I also don't think the Lakers should have signed him in the first place. And it's not Mm -hmm. even because of Russ, Mm -hmm. you know, Russ is a leader. You know, there, there's a, there's an adage out there that if you get a lot of leaders on a team, then you'll be successful. No, that's, that's not the case. You look at the successful super teams and the successful uh, NBA championship teams. Mm -hmm. You have a bunch of guys that know their role. When push comes to shove with the Lakers, they've got LeBron, who's the leader. They've got Mm -hmm. Westbrook, who's the leader. And they've got their coach. And they've got all sorts of people butting heads. And that's why they're not playing the Laker basketball that we know and love. Mm -hmm. Well, that some people know and love. Me, fuck them. But but they got too many cooks. And that's – Russ is used to being the guy in Oklahoma City. He ended up being Mm -hmm. the guy in in, – in Houston because of a hardened mm-hmm. injury. And now you've got LeBron and him fighting for minutes and spending too much time bitching and not enough time planning and mm-hmm. they're losing. Yeah, I just definitely and Angel, let's go to this one. Um he said, All right, Corey, it's two things. Let's go with LeBron first. Okay. Do we think LeBron's a good leader? I mean uh, yeah. I, I think Instantly. so. I mean Listen, <laughs> every team he's been on, every team, every team he's been on, you cannot deny the impact that he's had. Listen, he was the main, everybody talk about AD. Nah, LeBron was the reason they won that championship. But let's be honest. What's that? I mean, look at, look at this. I got a, after Kobe died, I got a bunch of Lakers people to co- contribute to an article. Uh-huh. And I sent it to LeBron James and he sent mm-hmm. back this thank you letter. That's, oh, that's awesome. Shit. That's awesome. That's eBay material right there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's awesome. awesome. That is pretty cool. That, I will frame that. that that's definitely – you. we all know the kind of person he is, though. Like, everybody gives him the – for some reason, gives him so much shit. And that's what makes me sick. I'm like, do y'all, do y'all guys, like, value greatness or you, do you just value what he did, did going to different teams? Like, listen, I look at him going to different teams. I look at him, hey, he made clear – better he made Miami better he made LA better everywhere he went he got a ring and he pretty much got his boys rings I'm just saying he made it hey you can complain about it all you want but you can't deny the fact that he is a great leader on the floor one of the mm-hmm. best we've seen in NBA history and people need to start giving his flowers because he's almost done people but yeah but I, was gonna, I could also I could also argue the fact that you know a lot of young guys don't really thrive under him I mean Mario Chalmers is, is, a, is a bit different. You don't um, get your ass. You look at Kyle Kuzma, you look at uh, Randall, Chalmers. you look at Russell, uh, D'Angelo Russell, Brandon Ingram. You know, it, it's hard to play with superstars, mm-hmm. uh, with a win-now mentality. So it, it mm-hmm. puts a lot of pressure on young guys. Mm-hmm. Um, hell, he puts a lot of pressure on older players. I've never seen <laughs> Russell play this badly. Ever, mm-hmm. sure. you know it's it's a different dynamic playing with all time greats. You look at Kobe, mm-hmm. uh, uh, R.I.P. to him. It's the anniversary of this past week. Mm-hmm. You know it, it is demanding. You know it's it, it, it's it's different. You look at even Jordan really couldn't do it. You, you got Kwame Brown out here spilling his. Uh, <laughs> you know. <He's> <laughs> so. He is. He really is, man. Kwame Brown's pouring his heart out and soul on everything. But I still can't believe it. Next time I see you, we got we got to have a conversation about this Mario Chalmers. This dude said Mario Chalmers. Almost, a tear almost came in my eye because I can't believe you just said that. But, yeah, I, I get it, though. But, um, yeah, you are right, though. You definitely like the Kuzmas, Kuzmas and stuff. But he played well. You know, he had spurts. Yeah. I definitely now I see what you're saying. He definitely had spurts, but they, it's not – the longevity of having success with him. Listen, but also we could put that back because he had Damon Jones hitting big shots and Larry Hughes looking good after at that certain run, man. But but I do get your point though. I definitely get it. And thanks, Angel, for the question. And you know, let, oh man. Very before we jump off, 
before we jump off of this, mm. when you get Matthew Della Vadova <laughs> to kick butt in the finals and get him paid afterwards, that's a miracle. That's a great leader right there. That, that yeah. <laughs> he, he did Della get Alex Caruso Dova. paid. So Damn sure right. did. Yeah. It, yeah, the Caruso. It's, it's, it's some give and take. Um, Absolutely. They, like you said, you can't deny greatness. He does mm-hmm. everything that you ask of him on the floor for the most part. Um, you, you don't get to year 17 averaging what he is, you know, by accident. So mm-hmm. it's, it, it's really commendable. I, I, I think he has his, his – he definitely has his moments where he's mm-hmm. a bit, you know, grumpy old guy. But <laughs> for the most part, he's, pretty, he's a pretty good leader. But I agree. I definitely mm-hmm. agree. Angel with another good question, Leon. We got to do it. So, Angel said, um, "What was your feelings going up on, going up two nothing, and then you know, pulling the, pulling the Knicks? I mean, with Reggie Miller." Oh yeah, oh Corey. Yeah, yeah. We, we got to hear yeah. it, man. What was your mindset, man? Because I know it hurt. Oh my yeah. gosh! I, if I, man. if I remember that correctly. You know, we we were going going up two one, or I'm sorry, we're, we went up two nothing, mm-hmm. and you know that 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 meme that Suns and Four guy just kept popping in my head. I'm like, no no no, <laughs> no. I I learned from 2016, man. You don't count players like Giannis out. You just don't mm-hmm. do it. And yeah, I was on top of the world. Holy shit, the Suns are two wins away, and and we, you know, but. Uh, Honestly, mm. I think that the players ended up sucking their own dick. And I think that they <laughs> lost a level of intensity because oh. they said, hey, we're up 2 nothing. We can coast. Oh, who, who, who is that they have? Bobby Portis? Fuck that guy. We're the Suns. We're up 2 nothing, And then they choked. Yeah, I mean, you definitely cried in the car. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I ain't BSing. I was a dusty-ass <laughs> bitch after that game. I'm not. I'm not I, I would have been hurt. I would have been hurt like Leon and KD like, putting his like, foot on the well, like, foot on the foot on the line. I mean, how did Giannis like magically made free throws after game two is beyond <laughs> me. <laughs> it was the counting. They gave him like some exactly. weird yep. thing. <laughs> we all like, kept saying, "Stop, stop, stop. The counting! <laughs> You're giving him a rhythm. Just shut the fuck up." That's what I said. <laughs> Yeah. Not oh man, that that was rough though, man. I I just I'm like, wow, we really gonna? What a year! We about to see them get their first ring. You know, Booker submitting his legacy, Aiden doing his thing, gonna get paid, and you're like, Chris, Chris Paul. That's why my favorite point guard of all time, right there. I was like, please let him get his ring. That that would be so awesome. CP just see that just when he went, he got there when they won the West and his. His face, he was just like, finally, it's about damn time. I'm like, oh, okay. But Yana said, nah, give me a 40-piece chicken McNugget. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that dude, that dude was amazing, man. Yeah, it, it, uh, it's hard not to like him, man. Nice, definitely. Yeah. yeah. He's so, he's so just, he's humble, man. You talk about humble stars, he, the dude is just... He's amazing. I love seeing stuff like that. I really do. Yeah, he doesn't deserve these fans that'll, you know, throw a, a Bulls jersey on with Jordan and then the Bucks make the finals and all of a sudden, oh, fuck shit. fan oh, for life. <laughs> <laughs> fuck out of here. Yon deserves better than oh. you. <laughs> he came out with the browning. <laughs> <laughs> I, got too, I got too many DMs, man. I got too many DMs. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you know it, the valley is the the area with the number you, your value of a runner up yeah you know, the sun's runner up the mercury uh runner up as well uh, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> oh man no oh, i gotta take a drink for that one <laughs> Mercury ended up uh, running up as well, losing to the sky. You know, the, Chicago just you – know, the last thing you want to see is Chicago being right and, you know, Mercury hiring a new coach, uh, Tarasi doing her thing. 
uh, free agency starts for the WNBA uh, February 1st. Talks of Brianna Stewart coming back home, possibly to the Liberty. So hopefully that happens. That would be a oh. wild, wild uh, duo. Uh, Sue mm-hmm. Bird returns for her 19th season. And uh, there's this new mm-hmm. league of athletes on Limited where uh, I guess it's a like point system based off individuals. It's it's on FS2. They're showing some stuff on Facebook. It's just mm-hmm. another uh, outlet uh, for the women to – uh, showcase their talent, you know, hopefully it gains some traction, might be like a, mm-hmm. a, a G League uh, yep. equivalent. Uh, hope that way you don't have to go overseas to, to play, but, you know, a- any way they can make their money, uh, I'm, I'm all for it. Uh, you know, I'll try to catch some games on TV and see how this all shakes out. But, you know, mm-hmm. all in all, good stuff there, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, did y'all hear about what Rondo said about Darius Garland? No. Uh, Angel brought that up. I, I was hoping we got to that. He said that Darius Garland, the best closer in the game, is point guard. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> uh, he, he must not He's be smoking. watching Kyrie, but okay. He's um, smoking tweets. I, I mean, what what is what's going on in Ohio, then, man? I listen. No I, cigars, I understand. Cigars are being passed around right now, and well, I mean that's Cincinnati, but still, it's yeah. I, I, Listen, Cleveland's been really good. Absolutely. Garland has been excellent. Uh, I really mm-hmm. hope he makes the all-star team. Mm-hmm. And, and Rondo has seen a lot. Uh, but hell fucking no. <laughs> no. I mean, I give him that. He, he is an emerging star. I, I give him that. But. He's emerging, later. but does he, does he average – does he average 89% shooting in clutch situations like a certain Chris Paul? Hell the fuck I, no. Get That's mid range guard. Well, listen, Rondo will never give love to Chris Paul. So we already knew that one. No, exactly. Never. It ain't happening. <laughs> it ain't <laughs> happening. <laughs> but yeah, he's averaging 19, 8, and 3. And the best thing, honestly, that could have happened was Sexton going down because that that guy definitely, he got himself, a, he going to get himself a nice little contract. And Sexton's yeah. on his way out of town. But Rondo, we all will say, lay off the damn weed. <laughs> <laughs> too, many, too many guys in the league that have been closing for years. I mean, Dame, Kyrie, Book. I, I mean, it, the list can go on and on. Uh, shit, man. I don't know what the hell are you smoking? Yeah, I'm just working on my product placement. Look at you go. Yeah. This is, uh, wait, we got to get the label right. There you go. Boom. More move. So, there, there you go. You want to get um, a suit? Yeah. But, but listen, <laughs> um, it, we we're about an hour and a half. We'll close this out. You know, in the snow, I was watching, you know, snowed in. I, I was binge watching Ted Lasso. And right mm-hmm. now I'm on uh, season two, episode seven. And mm-hmm. it, it, it's amazing what the, the uh, power of positivity can do. And that's mm-hmm. what that guy exudes. I mean, you, you get the mustache, the, the khaki <laughs> pants. <laughs> and I've actually been very intrigued by this show. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I I want to see where this goes further because uh, it's it's getting a little little dark right now. But mm-hmm. the power of positivity in your leader is can can work wonders even with a very bad team <laughs> you know, like they That's have. True. Man, um, I, I, I I've been very impressed with with Ted Lasso. Man, I, it, what's your thoughts on that one, Corey? It's positive, one of the, like stuff. one of the one of the best shows that I've seen in a while. I mean, honestly, I went and bought a hat, and I almost uh, I almost bought money for a a, a Kent jersey because I just I <laughs> I love it. I love it to death. And like the power of positivity is a big thing, but I think the biggest thing that Ted Lasso shows as far as leadership is when to make the time to make the tough decisions and when to be accountable and how to be accountable. Like at the end of season one, spoilers for anybody who hasn't seen it, you need to watch it. But at the end of season one, he benches Jamie Tart because right. he was a dick to his teammates and, and everything mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of NBA coaches, NFL coaches, MLB coaches that wouldn't dream of benching someone like that that puts up, you know, 
amazing amounts of points per game, but because mm-hmm. he benched Jamie, you see his ass come back in season two, and Jamie's actually better than yeah. mm-hmm. than he was in season one. Power positivity, man, making tough decisions. That's that's what it's all about. And you know, I one one of the better shows I, I binge watched. It. I I did that and uh, Insecure. If you haven't seen Insecure, man, that that shit is wild. Um, <laughs> Um, I mean, it, 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 it was watching good. shows. Uh, yeah, man. When you're snowed in, you got a you got a lot to got a lot to do, man. Lot yeah, to do. I'm surprised. I'm, I'm surprised. They usually make everybody still go out. <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh, oh no, I'm not. I'm not shoveling. <laughs> that's why you got. That's why you got kids, man. <laughs> I, <miss it. laughs> I ain't shoveling. No, I ain't shoveling. I ain't shoveling. I ain't shoveling. <laughs> I ain't shoveling. Shit. Shout out to though. I finally did invest in one. I mean, I won't lie. That was a that was a good. Freaking investment, but yeah, we're about to get smacked ourselves. But you know, like Corey gonna know something about it. Ain't something you might never know nothing about. My mic voice. <laughs> I ain't. No, I ain't saying anything. I I don't know. Fuck y'all. <laughs> Fuck y'all. <laughs> oh man, you but, and, you and Bush now. Yeah, uh, speaking of speaking of Bush, no, uh, uh, I think they're going tomorrow or, or yeah, or, you going tomorrow? Okay, tomorrow. tomorrow. I think they, I think they go tomorrow. Yep. More answers. Lit. Uh, twelve p.m. noon. Your lunchtime special. You, you know, you get on. You, you listen to those guys. You're gonna break down this past weekend's action. Let you, I mean, yesterday's championship games, man. Those were awesome. These, these mm-hmm. playoffs have been outstanding. Yeah, as you can see, I, my man Stafford. He's finally overcoming that hurdle. Mm-hmm. Stafford's greater than Rodgers. I don't want to hear anything else. Um. Uh, the fuck? It, it, it shut your ass up. <laughs> um, Motherfuckers, hot. <laughs> Jim, Jimmy G played like absolute trash. Uh, <laughs> and it dropped interception. It was heartbreaking. But um, he played like Julius Randle. <laughs> facts, <laughs> facts, all kind of facts. <laughs> Stafford gets over the hump. Joe Burrow mm-hmm. at leadership jackpot. Joey got cigars going around. Joe Cool. L.A. Super Bowl. Two weeks. Uh, most guys gonna break it down. Those guys gonna, you know, shoot the shit. And, and Giants got a new coach. I'm sure Randy's very happy. Buffalo uh, uh, OC. So yeah, uh, and, and the uh, GM. So good stuff there. To be on tomorrow afternoon, 12 p.m. Football life. Uh, uh, Wednesday is usually Dong City, Henry Martin Auto Jr. This is Daddy, but you know, since we haven't had anything for two months, thank you, Manfred. Bitch ass. Yeah. Um, both guys are a bit of a hiatus. Uh, David Ortiz, he's in the Hall of Fame for some reason. Uh, Fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Shout to my man, Barry. Uh, well, he kind of shouted himself, so it's kind of that. <laughs> um... <laughs> I'm sure the work shoot wrestling podcast would be back at some point. Royal Rumble was just past uh, Saturday. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ronda Rousey came back. Uh, I think what uh, who, who has the title now? Brock Lesnar got it again. Nah, bro. Uh, what's his name? Bobby Lashley. He, he oh, they, they put back. it back on Lashley. Yeah, damn right. Black History Month, fool. They think oh, they yeah, slick yeah, though. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> they think they yeah, slick. <laughs> all right, yeah. March first, he's up out of there. <laughs> That's it. You're done. You're, you're, you're done. <laughs> you're done. <laughs> Get him right. out of here. Get him out of oh, here. Oh, man. Who uh, else yeah. you got? Uh, uh, Total Basics Podcast with Felipe yes. Melicio, Austin Spiro. Uh, this past Round Trippers Podcast. On, oh, uh, Round Trippers Podcast as well. Uh, this past week, they were on with Dan Butler going over the Hall of Fame. Uh, Jacob, weren't you on last week? Yes, I was. You were on last week? Yes, I Oh, <laughs> what in the heck? This is ridiculous. This, um, my, I'm my, off. my bad. Um, I'm off. I, God, I yeah, was off. Nah. It was me and Melvin. Oh shit! Melvin, um, it was it was fun from Cosmo. Yes, Cosmo's base one. You gotta check that out. He's really good with the the Caribbean series. He got me back into it, and then that I love that energy. Melvin, Austin, and I we talked about the Hall of Fame. We made our goat lineups. It's pretty cool. You gotta check that out. Um, but yeah, definitely Austin's pretty good. He's doing his thing, man. Shout out to Austin Spiro, man. He's he's really stepping it up. Shout mm. out to him. Yeah, yeah, and you can catch various uh, uh, pop culture podcasts, uh, Disney movies, uh, 
pretty sure we're having some Valentine's Day rom com uh, chick flick bracket at some point. So, yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> something at the notebook with. Oh, uh, not true. That's <laughs> the most depressing movie of all time. I'm sorry. Man, I, I, I think I fell asleep about 30 minutes in. Yo, yo I can't. Uh, something about Mandy Moore, I just I, I ain't even feeling. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> I just, just, I'm good. But that Pretty Woman like, all day. Hell yeah, you damn right. Go uh, ahead, yeah. go ahead, nope, Julie Roberts. Uh, so there you go. Yeah, you have a winner right there. Uh, but you can catch that, all of our fantastic podcasts on by subscribing to the Life Group Podcast uh, channel on YouTube. Uh, if you still have Spotify, you can get it there. Um, <laughs> Apple, Anchor. Um, we're also on iHeartRadio. You know, yeah. People still listen to that? Uh, well, shit, they got to they gotta go to something if they don't have Spotify, right? <laughs> Cancel. Cancel. Everybody. <laughs> get them out of here. But, um, yeah, you, you can catch all of our previous episodes there. You can catch all of our uh other shows there as well. Uh, guys do an awesome job. And, uh, you know, it's more or less all we wrote here. Yes, Thank you, Corey, for coming on, man, spending some time with us. You know, take some time out your your night. Um, been much appreciated, man. Do you have any Absolutely. parting words for the audience? Uh, no, just uh, we're really close to 1,000 members in football life. So if you're not in, please come in. Uh, speaking of Melvin, him and I are going to be doing a podcast soonish, a uh, Christianity podcast. Oh. Um, and uh, yeah, just keep tuning into the step back and keep an eye out for when Donk City comes back and all the other podcasts that we have. Yeah, Vince ben, is losing this shit because, uh, you know, to have all this uh, with no material <laughs> and all that buildup, you know, I'm pretty sure he's ready to explode. He is, man. He, but they don't know what to do with themselves. They got a new GM, coach. They don't know what the hell to do with themselves, man. Yeah. It's, it's Brian Dable, Joe yeah, Douglas man. 2.0. All that Henry's, over here sh- Henry's over here shaving. I mean, they're not sure what to do with themselves. Yeah, this, this is man. wild. Yeah, yeah. I can't. You know, yeah. Throw that back, brother. Love you, Henry. Throw that shit back. Yeah. <laughs> Kill it, son. <laughs> oh, man. It's been a, another great episode. We got to start Black History Month, so it'll be short and sweet. And uh, you know, thank you guys for tuning in. And again, thank you, Corey. Jacob, you have yeah. any parting words for the audience, man? Oh man, thank you for joining. It's been a great episode, man. It's full of laughs. Uh, if you ain't like what you hear, you a dusty ass bitch. <laughs> um, uh, definitely, you know, check out our old episodes. It's it's been fun, man. Corey, once again, thank you for coming on. Much appreciated. Um, Nick's about to get this dub, so I'm gonna have a good night. I'm going to catch the last part of Raw. Probably going to catch me because my ass probably be asleep. But, um, but nah, definitely. It's it's always fun. Man. It's always fun. Yeah, thanks for having me. Oh, no, no problem, man. You know, again, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for your time. And until next time, everybody, ball out.